if Arsenal bottled it last year, Liverpool are bottlers this year. Throughout January and February and March, when they were five points clear at the top, when they won the Carabao Cup, when they were, even through injuries and problems, they were beating everyone. So, by Terry's own logic, anyone that's been at a five-point gap and didn't win the league bottled it. You can't compare five points at the start of February with eight points in April where you could have been ahead by 10 or 12 points if you'd won your matches. This is not April. This is not even May. We were not ever in a position where we could have said to ourselves, yes, this is ours, we have a demanding lead. We were five points ahead at one stage, but that very next game, once we got five points ahead, was Arsenal and they beat us. So if one game means we've bottled the league, you're onto some mad shit and I want to know where you get it from. It, it, like Anything to suit his agenda to make him come out correct at the end of every single point that he tries to make out there. I mean, he blocked me because I called out his nonsense. I'm guessing so. But I even made this clear in a point in the video, which I described this, where Arsenal and Liverpool didn't bottle a league because there was never really a commanding gap in between things. Arsenal had a commanding gap in their challenge last season. We never did. If anything, we let a lead slip. Yes, ha-ha, Steven Gerrard, all that sort of shit. But there was no commanding eight-point lead where we then fell back on it. So I don't know what Terry's on about here. But again, whatever suits his Arsenal pro agenda, because everyone knows he's a twerker for Arsenal nowadays. It's, it's Liverpool now. I mean, what, what did you expect eventually? They've never really been in a title challenge. They've, they've won the trophy in the COVID year, but they've never really been in a title challenge. They've never felt this kind of pressure. Says the dude who doesn't know that we were in a title challenge twice with Manchester City, falling by a point both times, finishing the league on 97 and 92 points. Now, we know what a title race is, mate, which is why we keep saying going against City is not easy, okay? Just think about how stupid it is to have 90-plus points and not win the league, yeah? Every other club that's had 90-plus points has ended up winning the league. So, Chelsea had 93 points in 16-17 season, Spurs second on 86 points. We had City with 100 points, the Centurions, in 17-18, United was second on 81 points. City, 98 points in 18-19 season, we got 97 in second place, and Chelsea got third with 72 points. Liverpool, 99 points in 19-20 when we won it, City second on 81 points. And that wasn't the COVID season, that's when COVID had hit, League was suspended, but by that point, we were already 20 points ahead in any case when they suspended play. So I don't know what this guy is waffling on about. And then City got 93 points in 21-22, Liverpool on 93 points in second, Chelsea third on 74 points. Yes, Dayo, we know what it's like going up against City. We know what a title challenge is like. We know what the pressure is like. Granted, we didn't win, but think about that one more time. Getting 90 plus points and not winning the league is stupidity. Maybe we are just the unluckiest club in the world to have gone up against a peak Man City at the time that it was with Pep and everyone that they had. We just fell short by a point twice. What else could we have done? That's just what we had to deal with. Now to Liverpool. We were absolutely crap against Everton. Pickford with seven saves. We couldn't score not even one goal. Chances missed. Opportunities gone. Wrong decisions. Poor play. Void of any ideas. It was absolute dog shit. The players look cooked. Klopp looks cooked. Everyone looks like they have just on the beach or in La La Land at the moment. I have no idea what's happening. Now, I can blame Klopp for the dip in form. But I can also blame him for the formations and the players that he starts and the players that he subs off. So player selection has been a big thing. The subs have also been a bit of a question mark as well. But I also have to look at the players and say, what the fuck are you doing? You're not performing to the best of your abilities because we know you're much better than this. And even Darwin, I don't expect him to be scoring 50 goals a season. But fuck me, if he took half the chances that he's had offered to him this season, he'd probably be on 30 goals already, which is a ridiculous amount of goals, yeah? Salah, I don't know what's happened since he came back from AFCON, had a bit of form, scored a goal or two, injured again, come back. I don't know where this Salah's been. He still creates opportunities. He still creates chances. It's just a shame that no one else can finish what he is creating. That sucks. But I know this team is better than what we have seen. 
And also big ups to James Redmond, yeah? You know, he doesn't do ifs, buts, or maybes. He does absolutes. Um, he said it best when he says, quote, I hate the way we live in a world where I can't critique somebody without having to say their achievements. As though you can't say Mo Salah has been shit without someone saying, well, hang on a second, Mo Salah's been great for us. Yes, we know he's been great for us. We know the players have done well. We know the team has done well. Players have won stuff. That doesn't mean that any bit of criticism that you give towards them for whatever reason, everything else is thrown out the window. No, Nobody thinks of it that way. Only modern day, or nobody, modern day people think of it that way. I don't know why. I really don't know why there should be no reason why people think if I criticize somebody who's done well that I automatically hate them or I dismiss all the good stuff that they've done for me. Yeah, they've done great stuff. But when someone fucks up, when someone hasn't performed properly, I'm going to question them and say, what the fuck are you doing? That's what a normal person does. None of this, oh, well, it's okay. We'll get them next time. None of that shit. Okay, we live in reality. We can see what's happening with our very own eyes, okay? We have brains, we have eyes, we can sense things, we can see things, we call things out. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, yeah? We have questions because we see problems. Doesn't mean we hate or we're negative. Now, no confidence in his team at the moment. It's all void. I, I, don't, I don't even know if we're certain to get third place because at the moment, if we don't win against West Ham and Spurs at home, Villa could take third if they capitalize on their games and then we have to play them at Villa Park, which could be a bit of a banana skin. Another loss away from home maybe this season. That would be absolutely devastating. And then we're really looking like we've really shit the bed from title contenders to maybe not even making top four. That would be fucking scary. That would absolutely be a fucking capitulation. That would be a bottle. I would be on the front line saying, Klopp, players, what the fuck happened to you in the last month of the season? Absolute fuckery happened there. Absolute fuckery. The last game against Wolves would be an absolute waste by that point, maybe. If we don't beat West Ham, we don't beat Spurs, we don't beat Villa, what's the West Ham game going to be? If that's three losses and Villa get their three wins, they overtake us. We're eight points ahead at the moment. Scary times ahead if that doesn't work out in our favor. Holy shit. But do the players want to be here? Yeah. Do they still care? Not even for Klopp, but for the club and its fans. Like a lot of people have said, Klopp's mentally checked out. Klopp is not even here anymore. He's long gone. And, and a lot of people say... Yeah, the players are finally catching up to what has actually been happening here. You can interpret that your own way. I think there, there was still a charge at one point, but somewhere along the lines, after the FA Cup, everything just fell to pieces. The the draws to United, the loss to Atalanta, the Crystal Palace game, the Everton loss. They just looked like they just could not give a fuck. Now, Arnie Slutz, Apparently, that's how you pronounce his name. Looks likely like he's going to be the next manager. And will he look to keep these players and have them go again? Or will he look to sell them on and ask for Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes for some new players to fit a system that he wants to play? Because some of these players are looking very questionable at the moment, yeah? Some of them, you probably say, stay on another season. You know, injuries, interruptions, and things like that. Other players, you say, you've been here for a couple of seasons already. You've been here for two or three, maybe. Something needs to give now. You're not doing what you're expected at a Liverpool football club. Thank you, but you're on the market now. We're going to listen to offers from other clubs. That could very well be the case. That could be the case. Do they even want to stay here and perform next season and and be here for this new manager? I don't know. Will the players even stay on next season? We'll be listening to a few of uh, some big hitters who say some of these men need to be gone from Anfield, and that includes the likes of Darwin Nunez, Ibrahim Kanate, and even Mohamed Salah. That's what I've been hearing. Now, the West Ham is an early kickoff, and Van Dijk, after that Everton loss, the first thing he says, yeah, well, we've got an early kickoff, you know, and, and we have to play at 12.30 again on Saturday. It's like, brother, what the fuck are you doing? You're the captain of Liverpool Football Club. You just lost a Merseyside derby to a team that's in relegation form, and they're even looking at PSR rules because they've had points deducted already. Why the fuck are you are you saying 12th? Th it's a fucking meme at this point. Everyone laughs at Liverpool FC when you say this sort of shit. After an international break, I get it, yeah? But this time of the season, you have to play every three days. Bang, bang, bang. Just get the fucking shit done. No, no, no bullshit, no excuses. You just got to fucking get on with it. And you best fucking get that win on, on Saturday, man. Because if that win don't come, fuck me. It, it's going to be fucking hard, tough conversations for a lot of Liverpool fans. And also a lot of rivals are going to be looking at us saying, what the fuck's happened to your team, yeah? 
the sensible ones will not talk about football. The shameless ones and the ones who just live off internet banter and internet points will just be shameless and just throw, you know, uh, your team shit, you know, one trophy in nine years and all that sort of, But talk to me about football, yeah? I don't want to hear your fucking bullshit you know, stories. But I'm not even confident that we'll get a result at West Ham, who have one win and drawn one out of the last five matches, whereas we've won two and lost three in the last five in all comps. That's a fucking worry. That's a worry. We need to take this game by the scruff of the neck. We need to win here. We need three points because we need third place. As I said, Villa are behind on eight points and they play Chelsea at home. So that could very much well be a slapping for Chelsea again. Villa should win that game. We can't afford to lose for fear of Villa catching us. And we still have to play them away, as I said. So we're away to West Ham. We're home to Spurs. We're away to Villa. And then we are home to Wolves. We best have third place sewn up by the time that fucking Aston Villa game comes along. Fuck me. It's going to be peak if third place is going to be in jeopardy. And then if fourth place looks a little bit shaky as well, which there is a slim chance, unlikely, but there's a slim chance Spurs can catch up as well. Again, they have to play City, they have to play Arsenal this weekend, and they have to play us. So long as us three respective teams do what we need to do, it could very well be good business for us. But Arsenal... They're in the driver's seat at the moment. City have a game in hand, if I'm not mistaken, and they're going to look to keep winning. So if Arsenal drop any points and uh, and, um, and and City keep winning, it's going to be game over one, once again. So that's all I have for this one here. I'll catch you on the next one. Let me know your comments down below. Peace out.